glycemic diet versus a high glycemic diet. Low glycemic diet is where you're consuming carbohydrates that digest slow. And it's a big thing, okay? We proudly say that if you eat low glycemic carbohydrates, that you're going to largely be a healthier person. Whereas we demonize high glycemic carbohydrates because they spike your insulin and they spike your glucose really high and really fast. But if we ever stop to think that, well, what happens over the long term? Now, personally, I like my low glycemic carbs. I like the way they taste. I like the way they make me feel. But that doesn't mean that that's the way that everyone should do it. So let's look at some data because you're going to find this very interesting and you're going to have a new tool in your toolbox to experiment with. Maybe you might want to try a little bit of white rice now and then see how it makes you feel, but you have to exercise control. I do want to make sure you hit that red subscribe button and then hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications. And then please, after this video, check out Ujido Matcha, 180 year old Japanese matcha company. If you're into green tea, if you're into a replacement for coffee, this stuff is the way to go. It is the most authentic ceremonial grade matcha that you're going to find. Clean, green, good stuff coming from baby green tea leaves that are grown in the shade like they're supposed to be. So highly recommend check them out down below in the description. Also have little on the go stick packs that you can use with sweet matcha and also matcha collagen, which is even cooler. So check them out down below after this video. So we're going to open this up with a big study that was published in the Journal of Obesity Reviews. Okay, it took a look at a bunch of different studies, 31 short-term studies and 20 long-term studies over the course of time. Okay, and long story short, they found that between groups that ate either a low glycemic diet or a high glycemic diet, for the most part, they came out losing about the same amount of weight over the long term. As a matter of fact, the low glycemic diet on average lost 1.5 kilograms of body weight and the high glycemic actually lost 1.6 kilograms. So if you want to get granular, the high glycemic lost more weight. So what exactly is going on, especially when we look at insulin resistance, because aren't high glycemic foods bad? Aren't foods that spike our insulin really high bad? Well, remember this, spiking your insulin is spiking your insulin, whether it's a high glycemic load or a low glycemic load. And I want you to think of things like this for a minute. High glycemic foods are going to spike your insulin high and fast, but then it's going to drop it and you're going to get a break. Okay, low glycemic foods are going to spike your insulin a little bit lower and slower, but it's going to take a long time for it to come back down. So arguably the overall load on your pancreas, the overall load on insulin creation might net out about the same. One group is just getting a big spike and then a big drop, whereas the other group is sort of getting a bell curve. So let's break down another study that was published in the journal JAMA. This one was really cool because it took a look at four different diet types okay, and it had them do these diets for five weeks. First, there was high carbohydrate, high glycemic. Then there was high carbohydrate, low glycemic. Then there was low carbohydrate, high glycemic and low carbohydrate, low glycemic. Well, guess what? They found that the low glycemic diets actually decreased insulin sensitivity. Not a ton, but it did. Meaning, what the heck? It goes against the grain of what we would think. We usually think that people that are borderline diabetic or anything like that might want to go on a low glycemic diet. Well, it turns out that it actually decreased their sensitivity to insulin. Why again? Well, we ask ourselves the question, do we constantly expose ourselves to carbohydrates throughout the day with a low glycemic diet that potentially puts some strain on the pancreas, puts some strain on our overall insulin load? Well, again, we have to dive in a little bit more because there's a really cool study that I call the chickpea study. And I call it the chickpea study because it largely looks at chickpeas. And personally, I eat a bunch of chickpeas and I eat a bunch of chickpea flour and I eat a bunch of chickpea pasta. Doesn't mean it's bad, but hear me out on this. So the study was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. It was a randomized crossover study, which means they sort of did two studies at once. First thing they did is they looked at one meal. They looked at a chickpea meal, and then they looked at a wheat meal, like a wheat bread meal and a white bread meal. Okay, instant response, like what happens with that one meal? And then at the same time, they were running a six week crossover study where they looked at longer term implications of eating chickpeas versus eating wheat bread versus eating white bread. What happens over six weeks? Well, here's what's wild. And this puts it all into perfect perspective. In the short term, in that short study, in that just the one meal, lower blood glucose, lower insulin levels, Boom. If we looked at that data, we'd say, well, duh, low glycemic's better. There's less glucose response. There's less insulin response. Call it a day. That's better for the body. But when you actually looked at the six week study, there was no difference. There was no difference in insulin resistance. There was no difference in blood sugar levels looking at it as a whole. So what the heck is going on here? Well, the possible mechanisms are really interesting. It comes back to what I was talking about just a minute ago. 
Okay, the group that was eating high glycemic carbohydrates, although they were spiking their blood sugar higher after each individual meal, and although they were spiking their insulin higher after each individual meal, they were getting a clear and defined break in their insulin levels between. Okay, so they were allowing glucagon levels to come up and insulin levels to come back down, and then they would spike it again. So it was a spike and a drop, a spike and a drop, allowing themselves to activate different hormones during that valley pathway. Okay, then you also look at the low glycemic probably instituted more morning insulin resistance just to stabilize blood sugar. Because it's not sure what to expect, it's going to kind of keep the blood sugar levels a little bit elevated and have more morning insulin resistance in order to keep them elevated and stable. So the point is, there's not one bad way or the other. If you have more control and more self-control, a high glycemic diet might actually be better if you can control it. It doesn't mean eat sugar, that's a different ballgame. But a low glycemic diet might work better for someone that doesn't have as much self-control and can't maintain that valley of no snacking in between. Anyhow, it all comes down to what works best for you. But don't demonize high glycemic foods if it's actually going to yield a positive outcome. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. See you tomorrow.